What's going on, y'all? We back at it again. Drams on deck. Today, we're going to do a whiskey. Today, I think I'm feeling kind of scotchish. That's a scotch. I already did you bring it down here. I already did the Dronix. Uh, Brutalize. I ain't did. Well, I haven't did you yet, but I know your time is coming. Oh, you know what? A couple of people have been noticing this. Let me let me do this Lecheg right here. You see what time it is. Lecheg, nine year. What's that say? Bordeaux red wine cast. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Nine years. This one right here. I'm, I'm a Lecheg fan if you don't know. 50 cash strain, 56.8%. We can dive all into this one. I had this one for a little while now, so it's time to go ahead and get that. You see what time it is. Bordeaux red wine. You see it. Got this from overseas at the UC, the UK stickers. I had to get this from overseas because uh, I couldn't find it in the store here. And you know that it's 70 uh, CL, so 750 milliliters. So essentially, it's like one shot less in the UK. But nevertheless, Lecheg 9-year Bordeaux wine cast finish. Let's go. You see what time it is, baby. Trams on deck. <sighs> today, today, we got a hitter in the building. Today. We got the Lecheg nine-year Bordeaux red wine cast finish on deck for review. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Um, if you don't know, if you've never seen some of my previous videos, um, this is like the third Lecheg I've done. Um, I've done a Lecheg 10-year. Uh, previously, I got one behind me. And then I also did a Lecheg 21-year uh, Manzanilla, which I have right here. This one I did uh, last year. So I'm just showing you the box real quick. This is the box. This is a 21-year Manzanilla. This is the box. Um, this is a, what you call this, a limited edition one. And here's the bottle for the 21 year Lecheg Manzanilla Sherry. This one is cash straight as well. This one is at 52.9%. That one I gave a perfect 10 to. So, you know, I rate mine 1 in 10, 10 being the best. I gave that Lecheg 21 year Manzanilla a perfect 10. Um, and that's, I believe, that's the only third 10 I've, I've given. Um, I gave, uh, I think the other one I did was Octomore 10.3. That got a 10. Uh, the Lecheg 21 got a 10. And then the last one was uh, the Buna Haben I have right behind me. It's a Buna Haben Bordeaux wine. And this is a Bordeaux wine. So that Buna Haben Bordeaux wine, um, that got a perfect 10. So it needs to say I only gave three 10s out of, you know, we got pushing almost at 200 reviews. So I don't give a lot of 10s. So to let you know that that Bordeaux wine was really, really good. And also behind me, I did a review of this as well. Here's a Deanston red Bordeaux wine uh, cash finish. This is a 12 year, um, this is 2008 version. I did a review on this uh, about over a year ago as well. This is cash strength. This is just under 59%. This Deanston red Bordeaux wine. I gave this a very high score as well. I believe it was eight or nine or it was, it was a high score. So um, needless to say that my Bordeaux wines uh, in the past, I've given high scores as well as the Chegg high scores. So the Chegg has gotten good scores and so has the red Bordeaux. So I put it together, um, you know, just just to, you know, preload. This should be good. Um, I've had this particular bottle for, I want to say, seven, six, seven months, something like that. I had to get this one online because you just don't really see these bottles um, around. I'm currently living in Des Moines, and, you know, Des Moines, I don't really carry a whole lot of different high-end scotch. And, and I, you know, I've been traveling lately to bourbon country in Lexington and Louisville. And obviously, that's bourbon country. They don't necessarily carry a high um inventory of which you know of scotch there so this is to say you may not be able to find this very easy at least i suppose well, i've never seen this on any shelf at any store um you know i have you know i do some bottle shopping pretty much anywhere i go in, in any state i go to i've, I've never seen this little check um red board online i've seen the 10 beer but the this one i've never seen so if you hypothetically if you're looking for this particular one you might have to go online like i did um i think i got this one from whiskey world uh, whiskeyworld.com is where I get most of my um, hard to get uh, scotches that you just don't find over here. It's normally where I would go. So I think I paid, uh, to my recollection, I want to I want to say I paid around, uh, it was like less than $100, believe it or not. So it was a pretty fair price. I mean, I, I want to say it was maybe $80 or something like that. And then with, you know, the the international taxes and shipping is probably maybe right out almost $200. But it's still pretty fair. I mean, like I said, man, so this is a nine-year um, and, and unlike certain uh, whisk, uh, whiskeys in the past, like this is not finished in red Bordeaux wine. So this is nine year. This is exclusively matured in uh, cat and barrels that previously held red Bordeaux wine. So they, you know, they put it in a barrel that had the red wine, and the whole nine years was in that barrel, not just finished in a barrel. So 
A lot of times when things are finished, they may be finished, you know, up to two years, something around there. This is the entire nine-year redboard online. So, and this is actually peated. Uh, the, there's Tobermory, which is the part of the distillery, and the Lecheg is part under the Tobermory, and they actually do the Lecheg is what you would get the peated kind. Um, so anyway, this is peated. This is sweet, high proof, right up my alley. So without further ado, as always, we gonna nose it, we gonna taste it, we gonna score it. And if I jump to this color profile real quick, this is a light, almost light caramel color. Um, it's not super dark. It's a, I would say my, uh, medium light caramel color. So, um, you know, it's nine years. And, and in scotch terms, nine years is not necessarily a long time. In bourbon terms, that is, that's an old, you know, whiskey. But in, in scotch, that's not old at all. So, but anyway, light caramel. I don't see the legs dripping. So it doesn't look extremely viscous or oily, at least based on the glass. So without further ado, let's see what this nose has to offer. All right now. See, right off the bat, you pick up a light hint of the, of the smoke. You get like a grilled ham note on here. Bacon, like a little jam note. Like I said, like a mesquite wood. And you get like a uh like a some kind of a sweet sweetness of it. It's like a I can't pinpoint the fruit, but it like it has a like a muted fruit note. Pretty pleasant. But the mesquite, the bacon jammy pork note, that's that's definitely nice. And you get smell just a little bit of a hint of salt on here as well. So oh no, nice, nice one. It's not bad at all. You know, I mean it's 50, 56.8%. So I thought it'd be a you know very kind of flagrant and pungent with the alcohol note, but it's it, I don't really pick it up. It's not hitting me in the face with, with ethanol or anything like that. So but yeah, pretty pleasant, pretty nice, uh Pretty nice one. And to me, I don't know if it's just me, but the peated whiskeys are my favorite nose because that the peat that you can get sometimes, if you have a good peated whiskey, you I can smell all the way over there. I don't have to put it in my nose. I can just smell the peat over there. If you get a nice one that has like a real like meaty characters to it, like a good art bag or, or even certain uh, Lafroy's, oh man, I can nose that all day. Um, that to me, those that that peat, you can really smell it. And it's very flagrant and it has a lot to offer certain ones. So anyway, without further ado, let's see what this first sip has to offer. Cheers. Hmm. All right now. Ah, it's rolling down my body right now. All right now. First sip of the day, Ooh. in the early afternoon. Mm. All right now, I'm starting to feel that first, but I like it though. The second sip, I ain't even gonna feel it. But yeah, that first one was nice. Strong, let me know it was there. But also, we get a nice, like almost like a, I don't know, like a sweet ginger spice note when it goes down. As always, I like to take two sips to really saturate my palate and give you a good deeper, a description of what I'm tasting. So one more quick sip. I'm going to give you what you want. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this one, I definitely pick up the brine, salt character. Like I said, you get that that spicy note to it. Like I said, that that gin almost tastes like a like a leather. The smell of fresh leather, I get it tastes like that a little bit on the way down, but in a good way. You know, that new car smell with the leather, that's kind of how it tastes. Like I said, that gingery spice note. You get a little bit of you get some vanilla on here. And a light cherry note. You get the you get some soft, gentle smoke. So it's peated, but it's not heavily peated though. So it's not, it's not like it's you know in your face like a Lafroy or Optimore. As a you know, it's a nice, gentle, you know, uh accompaniment uh of the of the peat. But you get like a nice little mesquite, a hickory note as well. All that rolled in with a little sweet oak as well. So the prevalent thing that I'm tasting, like I said, that gingery note, that light cherries, 
the, the uh, soft peat and that, that hickory note, and it goes down. So, like I said, man, it's not bad at all. I would say that I thought I would get more dark red fruits than because it exclusively did nine years in it. So I thought I'd get more red fruits than I'm actually getting. I know when I did that Buna Hobbin um, um, Bordeaux wine, you definitely got some of that. And then you also got in that Dinsen I just showed you. So so I'm, I'm getting, you know, like I, said, I got like a little cherry note, but it's not heavy on the dark fruits as much as I thought that it would be previously to me trying it, though. I mean, so um, all in all, like I said, man, it's not bad at all. Didn't disappoint. I poured some a little bit of water after that second sip to try to see because it's cash strength. So let's see if it, the water plays a part at all, if it affects it, it maybe adds character to it. So we're going to see if this water with is pretty much what it has to offer with water. So I'm mostly do this with higher proof. So if something's like 43 percent or something like that, I don't normally add water because it's already proof down. But when something is well above 50% like this, cash strength, barrel proof, if it was a you know, domestic whiskey, I definitely would try to add a little bit of water. So without further ado, let's take a sip of water and see what we got. Get a lot more brine with the water. That brine was in the background before the, before the water and with the water. That brine and that, and that smoky element is kind of what it was. It took a step in the forefront. So when you first swirl it with the water from the beginning to the mid palate, heavy brine, more salt character with it mixed with that mesquite wood. As I take it down, you get a little bit more of that nice little soft peat, little smoke goes. That's the, right now I took I down this last shot about maybe 30 seconds ago on it and like that peat is still rolling on my tongue. So. Nice, soft, but like I said, the one thing that I'm surprised I'm not getting a heavy amount of is like the dark fruits from the red uh, Bordeaux wine. So I thought it would be more heavier dark fruits, and that's not the case, at least on, at least on my palate. I mean, I got like a mild cherry note uh, without the water, but with the water, I'm not picking up any of that, any of that cherry notes or that vanilla so much. So I will say that the brine takes a more of a forefront with the water. So I mean, with or without, I mean, it's still good, but I probably like it without the water. But it's just a matter of preference. Um, it's still good regardless. So all in all, uh, pretty good dram, man. Um, so it's definitely not on the same level if we're talking about just Bordeaux influence as the Dingston or the um, uh, the other Bordeaux wine I did for the Boonhaven. But still good. Um, you know, this is still a solid dram. Like I said, for the 80 bucks or whatever around that time, that price point, that's, that's, I think it's still a good guy. It's still a good buy. Um Good stuff, man. Like I said, it's, it's sweet and peat, um, but it's not like uh, heavily sherry peat or heavy you know, dark fruits peat. But I mean, when I say uh, sweetness, what I'm referring to. So the sweetness is there, but it's not heavily sweet. So um, you get the, the brine character, you get soft peat, you get, like I said, a little small cherry note on there. You get, you know, a little bit of vanilla. You get the, all that, the brine character, a um, little bit of hickory note. Um, but like I said, just thought I'd have a little bit more red fruit on this than I actually taste on my palate. So if you ever had this, I'm curious to know what your opinions of it is. Nevertheless, I've had to rate this um, Lechec Bordeaux wine nine year, uh, one of a 10, 10 being the best for me drams on deck. Um, I give this an 8.5, 8.5 out of a 10 for me. I think it's a nice dram. Um, I, I like the sweetness of it. Uh, like, though it's mildly sweet, I like the mesquite. I like the the brine character. It's nice. Like I said, my only drawback is I just expected it to be more red fruits on it than I actually got, on, at least on my palate. So I give it eight and a half out of a 10, which is a very good score. Um, it's definitely not in the same caliber, I would say, as the Lechec. Uh, this one I did right here, this 21-year uh, Manzanella. This one is, I gave it a perfect 10. This is eight and a half. So this is definitely superior than that one. But, you know, this is hard to find as well. And in my opinion, of, uh, I'll just show you the bottle of it. Here's the uh, the Buna Haben. This one here is a Bordeaux wine. Here's I'll just show you the picture of the uh, here's the, what the bottle looks like. This, I, as you can see, I got this from the UK as well from uh, Whiskey World. So here's the our other one. This this Buna Haben Bordeaux is a monster. I mean, I almost had an out of body experience when I tried this one. I felt almost when it was a part when I was sipping that, I felt like my soul left my body for like five seconds. I was just like, oh wow, this is another level. I mean, it just it was yeah. So this one is good, but it ain't it ain't on those levels. It ain't it ain't them two. Okay, those two is a different caliber. But this is good though. It's good, but it ain't on them. So it ain't it ain't that level. So eight and a half out of a ten. I think the price point is pretty good. So I like it. I enjoy it. I'm glad I got it. I mean, so um, but yeah, man, if you if you 
you know, like those particular notes, uh, I think you should check it out. Like I said, just on, only not because I just didn't think it, I thought it, it would be more red fruit influence, but it's still good nevertheless. I get more brine than I do the, the red fruits, which is kind of surprising. But nevertheless, still good, solid dram. Eight and a half out of a ten for me, drams on deck. Uh, hopefully you got some out of this. If you, and this is mostly for my Scotch people because if you're a bourbon drinker, you you don't even know anything about the check. So I'm a, but people who are, uh, I would say, worldly whiskey people, people who try different ones, not just domestic whiskeys or Irish whiskeys or, you know, cognacs. I mean, I you know I try a little bit of everything. So, uh, but for my Scotch people, uh, the, the ones who like the peated ones, just so you know, this is a good solid one if you can find it. Uh, but like I said. Uh, like I said, it's just not heavy on the red fruit. That's all, as, as much as I thought that it would be, but it's still good though, nevertheless. So I uh, hope you got some out of it. If you do hit the like button, hit subscribe. They don't cost you a single thing. Check out my Instagram page because I have a lot of bottles on my Instagram page that I haven't yet reviewed. Um, but yeah, man, I'm just having fun. I got my Morris Brown College uh, varsity jacket on, you know what I'm saying? I'm with the HBCU down the ATL, just graduated that. Um, so, but nevertheless, man. I uh, hope everyone enjoying their 2023. Hope everything is going good for them. And uh, yeah, we're going to keep this rolling, man. So please stay tuned. Got a lot more hot reviews coming your way. Drams on deck. Yes, sir.